The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and afterwards was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and with their hands they will support you, lest they dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their magnificence. And he said to him, All these I shall give to you, if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this, Jesus said to him, Get away, Satan. It is written, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Today, as you know, we are observing the first Sunday of Lent, and uh, our Gospel reading today tells us about this moment when, after fasting for 40 days in the desert, Jesus is said to be tempted by the devil. And uh, we heard all the various temptations that the devil um, placed upon Jesus or, or asked of Jesus. And we know that basically Jesus uh, dismissed the devil. Basically, I believe Jesus said to the devil, you have no authority, you have no power over me, and be gone with you. And so I think as we uh, begin the season of Lent, when we have been invited ourselves to turn away from sin and to believe in the gospel, that uh, we have an opportunity during these 40 days ourselves to reflect upon those things that might keep us from being faithful to the message and the promise of our faith. And uh, as I contemplate this, I think that um, one of the things that, of course, might uh, burden us in our quest to live the Christian life is sin. We all have uh, perhaps temptations to uh, sin, that is, to turn away from God's love and do what we want to do and not what God wants us to do. It's a common, a common struggle, I think, for all of us. Um, and in this period of Lent, we have an opportunity to think about repentance, to think about um, those things that keep us from truly serving God and loving our neighbors as ourselves. This is kind of the focus, I think, or one of the focuses of this time of the year, this time of preparation that we call Lent. Um, And as I thought about this, I think uh, maybe some of us might be tempted, maybe myself, to say something like this, 
The devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. And uh, that was kind of the excuse of Eve in, in the Garden of Eden. She said, oh, the serpent made me eat of the tree of knowledge. The, the devil made me do it. Almost as if to uh, have an excuse for not doing what she was called to do. And uh, I think that uh, many of us might do that. We, we indulge in something we're not supposed to indulge in. We go too far with this or that. We're uncharitable. And we, upon reflection, say, oh, I knew I shouldn't have done that, but the devil made me do it. And I think that that kind of thinking is actually not uh, in accord with our faith. What, what am I trying to say? Well, have you ever seen that sign along? I've seen these signs uh, along the road sometimes. They're like a little sign uh, nailed to a tree. It'll say something like this. Alcohol is Satan's brew. Alcohol is Satan's brew. And uh, I find that interesting because, well, I'm not dismissing the uh, seriousness of addictions. Um, that's another issue altogether for which I could give a whole other uh, maybe uh, homily. But as Catholic Christians, we can't believe that anything, including alcohol, in our material world is somehow controlled by the devil. That allows us to slip into this kind of um, idea that this world is somehow a place of battle between good and evil. Is it? Is this world in which we live a place where there's a battle between evil and good? I think that that suggests that somehow the devil has power. Does the devil have power over alcohol? Hmm. It's an interesting question, I think. But if we think about it, our faith tells us that, that this world has been redeemed. We have to think, I think, back to uh, even in this time of Lent, we might give a, con a consideration for a moment to what happened in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. We believe that God sent his son to the earth and in, in the incarnation of Jesus, that, that is Jesus becoming one of us, Jesus, the son of God, living and walking on the face of the earth, this Jesus sanctifies everything in creation. That, that's to say everything is good and everything means everything. So how does sin fit into that? The simple answer, I think, is that um, people who turn away from God and sin, maybe using the, the things in this world, are actually um, giving power and um, assuming that somehow the good things of this world can be evil. What, what's really evil, maybe, or what is sinful, I think is um, what we do with what we have. Yeah, it's pretty simple. So when the devil uh, meets Jesus in the desert and he says something like, um, turn these stones into bread, or, or he uh, tempts him to throw himself off the parapet, or he tells Jesus that he can be the uh, master of things in this world, Jesus says simply, get away from me, Satan. Get away from me, Satan. The, the Lord your God you shall worship, and him alone shall you serve. The Lord your God you shall worship, and him alone you shall serve. I believe the devil, or Satan, or powers of evil, actually have no authority whatsoever. And for that, I simply look to the cross. Jesus went to the cross to conquer sin and death. 
Let me say that again. Jesus went to the cross to conquer sin and death. Jesus was born into the world in the incarnation. He became one of us. The presence of Jesus sanctifies all of creation. And he uh, further, furthers that by embracing the cross and sacrificing himself for us, to free us from the slavery of sin, to give us the fullness of grace. He promises us, as he sacrifices himself on the cross, dies, enters the tomb, and rises from the dead, that nothing that's evil has any power over us whatsoever. If that's true, then the devil can't make me do anything. The devil has no authority. The devil has no power. Only that power to which I surrender to anything that might be evil. This is what I uh, think as I read this gospel today. And um, we remember uh, in the first reading today, we had this story of Adam and Eve in the garden. God gave them everything that was good. What happened? They decided to turn away from the good that God had given them and to allow uh, a spirit of evil to influence, to tempt them, and to lead them astray. So today, as we uh, contemplate this temptation of Jesus in the desert, as we observe this first Sunday of Lent, as we enter this holy season, um, let's turn away from sin. Let's believe in the gospel. Let's place all of our trust in our Lord, who promises to be with us always, to never abandon us. All we need to do, I think, is to look to the cross, to understand that Jesus has died, has been buried, has risen from the dead, and who gives us life, a life that will last forever. I'd like to just uh, finish this thought with a little prayer that I wrote as I contemplated on the readings from Ash Wednesday this past Wednesday. This is what I wrote. This is a prayer for the season of Lent. Good and gracious God, Enable me to return to you with my whole heart. During this Lenten season, give me strength, O Lord, to persevere in fasting, to replace sadness with joy, to serve others with delight, and always to give witness to the wisdom of the Beatitudes. Allow me, O Lord, to rend my inner self, to love others from my heart, and not to seek the esteem and praise of my sisters and brothers because of who I am or what I do. Help me to return to you, my Lord and my God. O oh Lord, give me the strength to be gracious and merciful, to be slow to anger, to be rich in kindness, never to desire revenge, and always to comport myself without the slightest contempt for my family members, for my neighbors, for those with whom I work, and for all others I encounter today and always. Please forgive me, O Lord, of my sins and shortcomings, and bless me with your grace. For to you, my God, I offer all that I am, for you are my Lord and Savior, and you, my God, are the source and purpose of my life's happiness and joy. Amen. Have a great Lent, everybody, and God bless you.